Hey guys, Reef Spy here again. Today I'll be bringing another episode of my Keeping Reef Fish series. Today I'll be focusing on clownfish. There are so many different types of clownfish, it would be impossible to cover them all in this video. I'm going to cover the ones that I have personal experience with and give some tips on general care and different behavioral patterns that I've personally observed. One of the first fish that people think about when you mention saltwater aquariums is usually the clownfish, or more specifically, the Ocellaris clownfish. This would be the Nemo fish, as many people often now call it. There are many reasons for their popularity. They're fun to watch, easy to care for, and can be found for a relatively affordable price. The maximum size of the Ocellaris clownfish is only around three inches. This means they can be kept in a relatively small aquarium. I would recommend at least 20 gallons or more. An interesting fact about clownfish is that they all start off life as male. Only the most dominant fish will morph into a female. Once they have morphed into female, they cannot switch back to males. If you intend to have a pair of clownfish, it's a good idea to purchase them as an already bonded pair. This means that they will have already gone through the courting ritual to determine the roles each one will play. It can be a rather violent process, which involves a lot of chasing and fin nipping. But once they figure out who's who, the two fish will seldom venture very far from each other and remain bonded for life. Another option is to purchase two juvenile clownfish and allow them to work it out on their own as they mature. It would never be a good idea to mix two already female clownfish together as you run a very high risk of one ultimately killing the other. The female clownfish will typically be larger than the males and a lot more aggressive. This is my pair of Ocellaris clownfish which I purchased as juveniles. I believe the orange one has become the female as it is much more dominant over the black one and is becoming more aggressive as time goes on. Ocellaris clownfish come in a variety of patterns and colorations. As you can see, the black clownfish and orange clownfish get along just fine. They are the same species, just a different color variation. And speaking of variation, there are literally dozens of different stripe patterns and different markings that are available. In the wild, the majority of clownfish will have the typical three bar pattern. Breeders have been hard at work producing more interesting variations and coming up with all sorts of cool names for these designer clownfish. You may have seen some listed as Platinum or Picasso or Snowflake or the list goes on. These are all Ocellaris clownfish and will all be compatible with each other. The breeders just come up with these names to help identify the different pattern variations. In addition to my Ocellaris clownfish, I also have a pair of pink skunk clowns. These are not as commonly seen as the Ocellaris clowns, which are a mainstay of most reef aquariums. The care requirements and behavior of these two different species is nearly identical. You may have read that it's not advisable to keep two different species of clownfish in one aquarium, and this is for good reason. Although clownfish are typically listed as peaceful behavior, they can become quite aggressive, especially towards other clownfish when they're defending their territory. What we're seeing here is typical clownfish behavior of these two fighting for dominance of this portion of the reef. You'll see the typical nipping and pushing and shoving as each one tries to scare the other one away. It's been my experience that clownfish will mostly stay within a two foot square, rarely venturing outside of that area. With my tank being six foot long, there should be plenty of room for two pairs of clownfish to coexist in here. As fate would have it, both of my pairs have decided they want the same end of the aquarium, so they still need to work out the living arrangements. There is plenty of room in here, 
but for some reason, they've both decided they like that left hand overflow. One of the coolest interactions we can witness in the reef is the relationship that clownfish can have with an anemone. Many times clownfish will choose an anemone to host in and use it as a place to live and for protection. Unfortunately, in my tank, none of my clowns have decided to host in anything yet, but I'm still hopeful. This is a clip of the clowns I used to have in my 25 gallon, which used to love living in this anemone. Once a clownfish does decide to host in something, they are known to defend it vigorously. And you'll even hear stories of a two inch fish going after a 200 pound man if their hand gets too close to their home. As far as feeding goes, clownfish are pretty easy to satisfy. They will eat almost any pellet, flake, or frozen food you give them. Whether you're just starting out or been in the hobby for years, this is the type of fish that anyone can enjoy and have success with. So I hope you found this episode enjoyable, and if so, let me know in the comments or hit the like button. I've been getting some really good feedback and I love hearing from you guys. So hope to hear from you soon and I'll catch you in the next one.